Hi, I'm Sam with JBugs.com. Uh, why don't you guys stick around while I get all the glass put back in this Carmen gear. We begin by setting the upper quarter window seal aluminum molding back into place in the rubber seal. And we use a piece of masking tape to hold the molding in place so we can line up the screw at the bottom and we thread it in. We make sure the rubber seal is correctly in place with both lips overlapping the molding and tape the molding back to the roof for a moment while we get the rest of the screws installed. Next, we use the door molding as a guide to locate and poke holes in the headliner so installing the molding will be a bit easier. Then, we carefully cut back any extra material from the headliner that wouldn't be covered by the molding. At our bench, we coat the back of the new molding seals, which weren't previously used as the molding was only partially glued to the roof, with weather strip adhesive. We coat the back of the aluminum molding as well, and once the glue is tacked up, we set the molding into the seal, stretch the lips of the seal around the molding, and to make sure that the seal sets in place, we flatten out the aluminum. While we get the other pieces stuck together, can you click on the like and subscribe button for us? Thanks. We spend a few moments with a hammer and wide chisel straightening out the edges of the aluminum molding, which will help when we install the rubber window seal later. And these molding pieces will be ready to install once we get the quarter windows in place. So we get to work installing new quarter window seals, which is quite a chore, and the trim tool helps. We work the seal into the aluminum molding, alternating between feeding the inner edge and the outer edge into place along the bottom portion. The seal is looped in place around the body, and a piece of masking tape holds the seal in place temporarily, so we can heat up the seal to make it easier to install into the tight corner. We work the seal into place, making sure both lips are set into their grooves, and continue working the seal into place all the way up the roof and to the end. Once the seal is in place, the decorative trim is installed and slid in place over the metal posts on the body. And we trim the top edge of the seal at the end of the flat portion of the aluminum molding. Note that there are two legs of the aluminum molding that stick out past the end of the seal. Those two legs surround the B pillar, which holds the quarter window itself, which will test fit now. And as we do, the original hinges break so we head back to our bench, where we can see the broken pieces of the plastic hinges. We slide a couple of pieces out from the quarter window upright by hand, and then unscrew the other side of the hinges from the B-pillar uprights. Removing the seal makes accessing this piece is easier. A flat blade screwdriver is used to slide the remaining remnants of the hinges from the quarter window upright. Then we slide three new plastic hinges into the quarter window chrome. The holes in the B-pillar and the original seal help as a guide in setting the position of the hinges. Once they're in place, we can tap the quarter window into the B-pillar, check that it's aligned, and then reinstall the three screws to hold the window in place. We test fit the window in the car, checking the alignment of the glass and the upper and lower mounts, before moving back to the bench to install the B-pillar seals, which weren't in place when we took the car apart. After confirming the fitment of the seals, we apply glue to both surfaces and then set them in place after the glue is tacked up. We use some screws to preemptively poke holes in the rubber to make installing them later in the car a little bit easier. Then back at the car, the quarter window assembly is set in place, the three screws at the bottom are threaded in, and the single screw at the top is installed to secure the B-pillar. Now we can install the screws for the pop-out latch at the rear of the window. And we start by taping the window closed for a moment. Then inside the car, three screws are threaded in to hold the latch to the body. Two more than the original one that we had pulled out. The latch is closed as much as we can from the inside, but since we have new seals, it's going to take a bit more force. From the outside, we remove the masking tape and press the window in place with one hand while pulling the latch closed on the inside and we get the latch to pop into place. Back at the bench, we get to work on the door molding and start by trimming off the excess length of rubber. Then, using the holes in the molding as a guide, we drill through the rubber, which will make installing the molding easier. Now in the car, at the roof line, where we poked the screw holes earlier, the molding is set in place, starting at the rear, and we reshape the molding a bit as we slide down the length of the roof. Screws are installed at the front and the rear to hold the molding in place before installing the remaining screws in between. Next, 
we install the V-pillar seal, which will install with a longer lip towards the inside of the car. It slides up the pillar into place, and we work the seal back and forth to make sure it's relaxed. The A-pillar seal will be installed next. It has a base that inserts into the two lips of the roof molding, and an open lip that the window can roll into or shut against. We begin installing it, butting it up next to the B-pillar, and insert the back edge into the molding first, and then use a trim tool to push the front edge into the molding channel. We use this process all the way along the molding until the seal is fully installed. A pair of side cutters is used to cut the roof and the B-pillar seals at angles so they can butt against each other. Then we cut the bottom of the B-pillar seal so it's even with the upright and close the door to check the fit. The bottom of the seal at the A-pillar is trimmed as well and we roll up the window to check the fit. That was a lot of work for one side and we still have to repeat this whole process on the other side. So we'll get to work on doing that, repeating all the same steps and we can call it a wrap for this video. Next up, we'll install the front and rear windows. Until then, thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions in the comments below.